Okay, reading and evaluating arguments part two. More advanced understanding inductive and deductive. Inductive and deductive arguments. In this tutorial, you will learn to distinguish between deductive arguments from inductive arguments and why it is important. All bats are mammals. All mammals are warm-blooded. So all bats are warm-blooded. And arguments are inductive or deductive. Deductive arguments are arguments in which conclusions claimed or intended to follow necessarily from the premises, all right? meaning that the definitions interlock. Bats are defined as mammals. Mammals are defined as warm-blooded. Therefore, by transference, just like in math, bats must be warm-blooded because the definition of mammal is part of the definition of bat, and warm-blooded is a condition in the definition of mammal. Woo! You ever wonder how something so basic can be complicated? These arguments are why. Inductive arguments are arguments which follow where the conclusion is claimed or intended to follow probably from the premises, meaning that they're empirical and probabilistic. They're not 100% true. They're not definitionally true. They're based off observation. Is the above argument deductive or inductive? Kind of giving you a hint already, haven't I? It's deductive. If the premises are true, the conclusion logically must be true. Bats are defined as mammals. And mammals are defined as warm-blooded. Therefore, bats are warm-blooded. There are four tests that can be used to determine whether an argument is deductive or inductive. The indicator word test, the strict necessity test, the common pattern test, and the principle of charity test. Go ahead. Kristen is a law student. Most law students own laptops, so Kristen probably owns a laptop. Is this inductive or deductive? The word indicator test asks whether there are any indicators that the words provide clues to whether the argument is inductive or deductive. This argument is common deductive indicator words include phrases like necessarily, logically, in the case that, and this proves that. You will notice that none of those are in that argument. Even though it's structured, just like we saw the prior Deductive argument, we know it's probably not because it includes the word probably. Probably, likely, plausibly, it is plausible that, it is reasonable to think that, reasonably, it's a good bet that, are all indicators of inductive logic because you have to hedge your bets on an inductive argument. In the example above, the word probably shows that the argument is inductive, even if it is structured like a deductive argument. No Texans are architects. No architects are Democrats, so no Texans are Democrats. Now, before we get there, I know this argument is not true. That is not the important thing. The strict necessity test asks whether the conclusion follows from the premises with strict logical necessity. If it does, the argument is deductive. In this example, the conclusion does follow the premises with strict logical necessity. Although the premises are both false, the conclusion follows from the premises because if the premises were true, the conclusion would be true as well. No Texans are architects. No architects are Democrats. So no Texans are Democrats. Either Kurt voted in the last election or he didn't. Only a citizen can vote. Kurt is not and has never been a citizen. So Kirk didn't vote in the last election. Now, is this a deductive or inductive argument? The common pattern test asks whether or not the argument exhibits a pattern of reasoning that is characteristically deductive or inductive. If the argument exhibits a pattern of reasoning that is characteristically deductive, then the argument is probably deductive. If the argument exhibits, exhibits a pattern of reasoning that is characteristically inductive, then the argument is probably inductive. In the example above, the argument exhibits a pattern that we call argument by elimination. Arguments by elimination are arguments that seek to logically rule out any, possible, any possibilities other than a single possibility that remains at the end. These types of arguments are always deductive. Arnie. Harry told me his grandmother recently climbed Mount Everest. Sam. Well, Harry must be pulling on your leg. Harry's grandmother is over 90 years old and walks with a cane. Is this argument inductive or deductive? In the passage above, there is no clear indication whether Sam's argument could be regarded as inductive or deductive. For arguments like these, we fall back on the principle of charity. What is the principle of charity? 
According to the principle of charity, we should always interpret an unclear argument or passage as generously as possible. And actually, this is even a good rhetorical strategy because it, because if you beat the stronger argument, you have a stronger argument yourself. We could interpret Sam's argument as deductive, but it would be uncharitable since the conclusion doesn't follow from the premise with strict logical necessity. It is logical possible, although highly unlikely, that a 90-year woman with a cane could climb Everest. It's logically a possibility. Thus, the principle of charity tells us to treat this argument as deductive because it's just highly improbable that Harry's grandmother would do that. Therefore, if we treat it as an inductive argument, it's it makes sense. If you treat it as a deductive argument, it's clearly wrong. Are there any good Italian restaurants in town? Yeah, Luigi's is pretty good, but I've also had the, I've had their Neapolitan rigatoni, their lasagna col pesto, and their mushroom ravioli. I don't think you can go wrong with any of their pasta dishes. You tell me. Is this argument deductive or inductive? Based on what you got, what have we got here? It's inductive. Why? Because he gives three examples and then concludes that most of the pasta dishes must be good from the three examples that he's tried. This, this argument is an inductive generalization, which is a common pattern of inductive reasoning. Also, the conclusion does not follow with strict necessity from the premises. There could be a really bad pasta dish there. He just hasn't tried yet. I wonder if I have enough cash to buy my psychology book as well as my biology book and history textbook. Let's see, I have $200. My biology textbook costs six, uh, $65 and my history textbook costs $52. Yes, college textbooks are that expensive. My psychology textbook costs $60. With taxes, it should come up to $190. Yep, that's enough. And note, I made this, this presentation a long time ago because you think these numbers will probably be double now. Sorry, guys. Um, what do we got here? It's deductive, and it's deductive because of the math. If you have a mathematical argument, it's a deductive argument, like necessarily. This argument is, is an argument based on mathematics, which is a common pattern of deductive reasoning. Math is deductive logic, by definition. Plus, a conclusion doesn't necessarily fall from the premise. He has $200. The textbooks cost less than $200. Therefore, he can buy his textbooks. Mother, don't get Billy that brownie. It contains walnuts, and I think Billy is allergic to walnuts. Last week, he ate some oatmeal cookies with walnuts, and he broke down in severe rash. Father, Billy isn't allergic to walnuts. Don't you remember when he ate walnut fudge ice cream at Melissa's birthday party last spring? He didn't have an allergic reaction then. Is this argument deductive or inductive, and how can you tell? It's inductive. The father's argument is a causal argument, which is a common pattern of inductive reasoning. Also, the conclusion does not necessarily follow from the premises. Billy might have developed an allergic reaction to walnuts since last spring, and it's it's perfectly logical possible for that to happen. John is agnostic. It follows that he doesn't believe in God. Is this argument inductive or deductive, and how can you tell? It's deductive. It, it's actually part of the definition of agnostic that he doesn't believe in God. The common argument is an argument by definition, which is a common pattern of deductive inference. Also, the phrase that necessarily follows that is an indicator phrase. So it also meets the indicator phrase test. So the conclusion follows from the premises. Do you think Representative Poitmeister will be reelective? I doubt it. Poitmeister's district became more conservative in recent years. Poitmeister is a liberal Democrat, and 63% of registered voters in his district are now Republicans. Is this argument deductive or inductive, and how can you tell? It's inductive. This argument is both a statistical argument and a predictive argument. Notice statistical arguments are arguments where math applies, but because they're probable, it's not deductive and i know that's confusing because normally when you see numbers you automatically go in uh deductive but not with statistics because the probability leads to probably right and that's an indicator so that's uh two common patterns of inductive reasoning also the conclusion does not necessarily fall from the premises portmeister may be pro popular with the rest of republicans in his district for reasons other than his ideology although that would be weird if Buster walked to the game, then he didn't drive to the game. If Buster didn't drive to the game, therefore Buster walked to the game. Is the argument deductive or inductive, and how can you tell? 
It's deductive. It's based on definitions. This argument is a hypothetical syllogism, which is a common pattern of deductive reasoning. Note, however, that the conclusion does not follow logically from the premises. Buster may have rode his bike to the game after all. The argument consists, uh, commits the fallacy of affirming the consequence. So it's a deductive, it's a deductive argument, but it's a bad one, and we're gonna talk about fallacies later. <laughs> All right, and we're gonna stop here because I have a whole another paragraph, um, well, a whole another presentation on logical fallacies.